All right. Well, it's a. Uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to uh, do an exact repeat of the Luke one, but I. It's. It. It'd be cool to get uh, different perspectives on the molten salt reactor thing that's happening in China. Uh, the one is posted on YouTube called the dawn of the neutron economy and uh for the you know like i've talked about the molten salt reactor more than once and unbeknownst to me at the time there was a massive government supported program going on in china that was shit i mean we were i was talking about it we have recordings of it in like 2019 and unbeknownst to me cement was being poured and designs were being made and now they're going to start up the reactor next month yeah. in August. Yeah. In, in Wushu? Wu Wei. Wu Wei. Wu Wei. Right, that's, right. Wu, that's right. Wu Wei. Yeah. 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 A, a two megawatt reactor. That's a research reactor. They're going to run tests on it and, you know, uh, see, see how it goes. Yeah. And what that also means is, pro you know, certainly at this point, uh, the blueprints and the engineering is already being is in the act of being done and completed for commercial production of these types of reactors yeah so it <clears throat> is you know it is the dawn of a new era yeah. it's more important than the steam engine more important than the steam engine with let, let's let's hope not so many unforeseen consequences yeah yeah and we do, and the thing is, is when they started making the steam engine, nothing like that had ever happened before. Yeah. Whereas now we know what the steam engine does, and so uh, I, to say to say about the Chinese government, especially the communists, unforeseen. That's all they do is foresee. Yeah. That's the, that's their job is to look at the future. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah, I think that, that's probably true. But even even the best prophet. Can of make, course, is of course is is, and I, I actually, in in my opinion, I think they have an overconfidence in their ability to control nature. I believe, I also I, I really agree do. with that. I really do. I think that they, and I, I get that not just from reading, from even reading communist poets. Right. We are climbing in the mountain. We can conquer this. We can we can overcome, and they even mock Lee by uh, for when he says that nature is no. We can overcome that. Oof. Yeah, don't mock me by. No, you I don't. Advise you. Yeah. No, it, it is, and that's like they are taking on themselves this terrifying responsibility now. Not only are they the center of the world's economy, uh, but now they're. I mean, that they're now they're going to start the process of getting the world off of fossil fuels yeah. and taking the responsibility of actually doing the groundwork, the real work of uh, undoing, not undoing, healing climate change and this ecocide that we've, the <clears throat> Western world, the colonial world has yeah. done. Yeah. That's a big responsibility and they will make mistakes. They will make terrible mistakes and the consequences will be hideous. Yeah. You know. And, and, and not only make mistakes, but one of the problems with a bureaucracy like that is that the lower down you are, the more you want to please the guy on the top. Yes. Up to the top, up to the exactly. top. So I remember back in the early 70s, you know, the worldwide fisheries were declining. Yeah. And yet somehow China's was not. Yes. Yeah. And so the speculation was they were padding their numbers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do that. Yeah, shit, they did. I mean, I mean, it's kind of the great leap forward. You know, they were shipping <laughs> grain out while they were starving. Yeah, people were. Yeah, save us, Chairman Mao. You yeah. know, is is terri terrifying. They don't. We still don't know how many people died. They don't know. Yeah, you know, thirty million. Yeah, but on the flip side of that, I would say. There's another thing. There's another thing that uh, th there's another event that can be labeled the Great Leap Forward, and that's the past thirty years. Yeah. In China. Yeah. You've seen it. I've seen it. I have seen it, and it's it it, it just overwhelms me. It's staggering. It is. It's absolutely staggering. Yeah. And uh, you've you've seen Chengdu go from basically from. <clears throat> A city that nobody had ever heard of, 
to a major technological center. Uh, it's colossal. It, it is, yeah. What, what's the average height of a building in Chengdu? It's yeah. 30 stories I, now? You know, I, it's not realizing just what's happening in China. I mm. remember in 90 or 93, 94, I saw this huge high rise going up mm. downtown. I mean, we used to be able to see the tallest building in, in Chengdu, one of the, t well, what was, which was the hotel, the Jinjiang Hotel for Western foreigners. And this is where the American embassy was. Yeah. Okay. You could see that from the top of the student's dorm. Hmm. And they, you saw this big building going up. And I, I felt sorry for those people who were going to have to walk up those stairs. <laughs> right. You know, but meanwhile, that's just one of hundreds of buildings like that. And yeah. they're five-star hotels. They're international businesses. And the Jinjiang Hotel not only no longer has the American embassy, they built a new one with a swimming pool, which they opened in 94. And now that one's passe, and they're building another one instead of that. Yeah. The airport when I went was a small airport, and you had to stand in line to pay your tax to get mm -hmm. out. It was an airport tax. Everybody had to do that. Now, so they built another airport, okay? Yeah. That newer airport. And then another airport, and now they're building another one. And they're going to take the third one and just use it. Or one of them is just for freight, and the other one's for... <laughs> I mean, I, this is, I mean, it's just you can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. So imagine, I mean, that's, that's what they did starting from a position of weakness and poverty. Yeah. Now they're the center of the global economy. Yeah. And now they have the molten salt reactor. It is a million times more energy dense to break the nucleus of an atom yeah. than to burn a carbon hydrogen bomb yeah. and to oxidize it. Yeah. A million. A million times. I, oh, I, I sh you know, like you can hold in your hand all the energy yeah. that you will use in your lifetime at a Western standard of life. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, sp you run it through a reactor and every one of those nuclei essentially will get hit by a neutron and either breed or split and then split. And a million, you're born, you know, here's, here's a kilogram of thorium that you get as a human being. Yeah. Here's your birth certificate and a kilogram of thorium. <laughs> it's not even a kilogram. It's less. Yeah, it's less. It is. And, so, you can, and you can use that energy to help clean up the mess we've made. Exactly. Because right. it doesn't emit CO2 when you're doing it. Yeah. You and could you, probably use it to t remove CO2. Exactly. You yeah. will. Yeah. Yes. All these environmental initiatives that are happening in a fossil fuel-based economy are fueled by fossil fuels. Yeah. We want, you know, like, like you see these people who are like, well, we protected this 50 acres of forest. All well and good. You had to drive to get there. Yeah. You had to you had to drive to you know bring your tools to go and pick out invasive species. Yeah. In well, the and then what and what's the rationale for the electric cars? What's going to charge the batteries? Exactly. Fossil fuel. I mean, yeah. we're not going to build more dams. We're taking them out. Yeah. Solar power. And there's nowhere. And you there's nowhere to build more big new dams. There's like three <laughs> spots in the world yeah. left to build significant. And they're probably still in China. I mean, they yeah. now they, they now the then. second one, the second yeah. biggest in the world, is now open on the ginger. Shock. Yep. Uh, and I mean, they have built tens of thousands of dams. Yes. We just hear about the big ones. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, the really big ones. Yes. There was one that was supposed to have been built on the, on the uh, Minshan River, uh, but people got against it and they yeah. didn't build it, which was, you know, where That's there was. Good. Yeah, it was good. And with the molten salt reactor, you will not have to build dams. Yeah. And you will be able to take out dams. Yeah. Because the molten salt reactor, uh, unlike solid fueled nuclear reactors, the molten salt reactor is superb. It is so good at following the demands of the electric grid. Yeah. So you can ramp it up and ramp it down because it's like a spring. Or, you know, like if you push against it, it resists. If you pull, it resists. So if you need less power, you turn it down. Yeah. If you need more power, you turn it up. Yeah. Unlike solid fuel, which doesn't like that at all. Yeah. And uh, actually, it's to the point of being very dangerous. It's extremely dangerous uh, to the, to the uh, stability of your solid fuel to heat it up and heat it down, yeah. to, to turn it up and down. That's why solid-fueled nuclear reactors provide baseload 
yeah. the electricity that's always there, the stuff for your street lights, the stuff for your hospitals and whatnot, the bottom 30%. Well, the electric grid, woo, right, yeah. every single day because that's what humans do. Well, we wake up and we boil water. Well, how does it work on a nuclear submarine? That's solid fuel, right? Yeah, it, it's just nuclear submarines, are they're just so different. Um, they're itty bitty, strangely yeah. enough. Uh, but you have all the water you need <laughs> to cool it. Yeah. You know, there's never a risk of that. Oh, that's true. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. yeah. But also, they. I I am not a nuclear physicist, uh, so I don't know. But yeah. They they're designed. They can deal with it. But I mean, just the water alone would mean they can't be amped up and used in every neighborhood. Right, just keep, yeah. just keep the reactor yeah. cool. Well, and the and the economics of nuclear reactor, like it, I you kind of start going, you went, if you delve into the world of molten salt reactors and nuclear energy, you and you start inhabiting an alternative universe where the what the media says about nuclear reactors and like Bill Gates and 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 people they say oh we want small modular reactors. The economics of small modular reactors are terrible. The smaller it is, the more expensive it is per megawatt. Yeah. Because you have to build the fucking thing. So it's like 60 megawatts for... If you're going to build a small modular reactor that tops out at 60 megawatts, 60 megawatts is... What percentage of that in a thousand megawatt reactor? But you had to build everything around it, yeah. you know? So the economy of scale yeah. is against you the smaller you get. So I'm... Not only am I against solid fueled reactors finish what you're building and then don't make any more i'm yeah. even more against small modular reactors yeah. like new scale it's bad economics it's terrible economics it will make your electricity more expensive yeah and you'll have more nuclear reactors than you need <laughs> yeah. so what's i mean with china and the molten salt let's assume it goes and it works and they can yeah. start mass producing them yeah. Will there be competition from the West then trying to do the same thing, or will it That's... be where they try to try to say, well, we'll start buying the products from China? I wonder. If that is a really interesting question. Yeah. I here's the deal. Um there is no government run nuclear molten salt nuclear reactor program in the Western world. There are private initiatives yeah very well funded and extremely competent yeah but the government isn't doing it yet yeah and in the western world we're already 10 years behind yeah so even if we do this even if we and i mean like start doing it yeah we will we've already lost the race yeah you're 10 fucking years behind yeah. um so will we try to compete with them? I think probably you'll have an abortive, expensive attempt. Yeah. And then it'll go, oh, we can't deal with it. We can't build a reactor cheaper than them. And so then we cuddle up to them the way we do to Saudi Arabia, I suppose, maybe. Maybe. But they're communist? Uh, no, of us, well. So. Well, I mean, you got a feudal society in, in yeah. Saudi Arabia. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah. Wahhabist. Uh. Uh, a Wahhabist monarchy. <laughs> Ugh, what friends? What good friends to have? Um, so I don't. But because I mean, this is like. Okay, so you start buying nuclear reactors from China. Yeah. Then you then you have to really pretend that China doesn't exist, yeah. don't you? Because yeah. every product, not only is every product, you can turn the made in China product label on all of your consumer goods away and you know put it on the bottom side so you yeah. don't have to see it i think that's probably what america will do about i mean we're we're pretending the rest of the war the rest of humanity doesn't exist at yeah. this point you yeah. don't exist afghanistan doesn't exist yeah yeah we will never make a reactor cheaper than them because they know what they're doing and they're not they're we can't make consumer products cheaper than them and now their energy source is going to be free <laughs> and india is going to be interested in what they have yeah like india has brazil a, and yeah yeah because it, it, it it's getting to the point where it's look i mean like 
it's sometimes I feel like I'm living in like the matrix where the simulation just had some random numbers thrown in. But on the other hand, the most powerful, competent government, that's the industrial, that's the beating heart of the industrial world economy is communist. The Western world cannot deal with this. Yeah. What will you do? Yeah. What will we do? Yeah. Sometimes I, sometimes I honestly feel, you know, like I, I talk to right wingers. I, I, I hide my views from yeah. them. I don't tell them what I actually think and goad them yeah. in a, you know, in a sneaky way. And they're like, we should cut all trade relations with China, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> what do you, what do you do when you, they have electricity and your electric grid is flickering out? Yeah. yeah. Pretend they don't exist. Yeah. But of course, I mean, for me, the, the the underlying, the deep deepest concern is, it's, China develops this and it takes a decade or whatever mm -hmm. it does. Is that too late? I mean, with the population and the climate change, is it just it going to get late. so? Is it going to become so chaotic? Yes, that's what before that can happen. I it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the Bronze Age collapse. Yeah, the peripheral regions. Yeah, disappeared. Hittites, Mycenae, yeah, gone. Yeah, there's no Hittite empire. There's a few city states, Neo. Yeah, Hitt but Egypt and Babylon and Assyria survived. Yeah, but the peripheral regions th see that the 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 core shrank, yeah. very much shrank. I think in 150 years it'll be like there is no government in North America. Yeah, there's warring tribes it's kind of a mad max scenario yeah. and people are like what do you mean and i'm like you won't have any oil you will not have any oil and the few remaining oil fields left they will the warlords in charge of that oil will use it as leverage against their periphery yeah. and you're talking like a couple hundred acres in texas yeah what do you mean i'm like you don't know shit about the oil situation. Yeah. People don't look it up. It's the most vital substance in your life. Yeah. By the time we're done with this, four more million barrels will have been oxidized. Yeah. And then another hour after that, four million barrels an hour. Yeah. It is the single most important substance in the world. And now China has a reactor that means they won't need it. Yeah. This is like, this is like the oxygen catastrophe. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? The, the earth has always been aerob aero anaerobic. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's slowly building up. And, and then organisms come along that can use oxygen. And it's a better electron receptor, isn't it? Yeah. And you can go from generating two ATP molecules with glycolysis yeah. to what, 32 with yeah. the electron transport yeah. chain? Yeah. A million. You're going from fossil fuels that can do quantity X of energy to a million X. Yeah. yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. It's going to look like Star Trek <laughs> in China. Yeah. I, I, you can't exaggerate this. Yeah. I, a million. What, what's a million? You know, we talk about the budget deficits, millions, billions, whatever, three trillion budgets. We're printing money to try yeah. to cover this hole. Yeah. So, but a million times more energy is colossal yeah oh my god imagine if you had to fuel your life mugs with wood <laughs> <laughs> or if i had to get from here to seattle using oxen pulling a cart yeah uh some of those ancient city states you could see from one to the other yeah from the top of your ziggurat or pyramid <laughs> You know, if you're a Mayan pyramid, you climb to the top and you can see the next government, sovereign yeah. state. Yeah. Because they didn't have enough energy to feed the metabolic requirements yeah. of a bigger government. Yeah. Imagine if the Maya had a molten salt reactor, what would they have done with it? Yeah. China's older, as old as the Maya. Yeah. Yeah, it is amazing. Damn. I mean, I'm... I'm you know, like my speculative fiction in my head is like, how many different languages is English going to split up into just in North America? Yeah. Speak English, motherfucker. Yeah. Speak English or shut up. <laughs> Which <Yeah>. one? <laughs> Which version? Okay. Now you're getting the news about the reactor in yes. China. You're getting it via internet. Internet. They are announcing it. They are. 
They aren't announcing it. Or they, they are. They are. This announcing. isn't secret. I'm, I don't yeah. have any expertise. No, no. I, I'm, I'm just saying. Light. But but they are. They are. They are making announcements about this. Yes, so. that's how confident they are. Yeah, and that's how unworried they are about the West. They have a very close eye on us. Yeah, we do not have a molten salt reactor program, and now they're ten years ahead. Yeah, they're bu- They're bragging. When is it going to make the Western news? I mean, when am I going to be reading about it in the New York Times? You'd think. <sighs> You two years, maybe two. I mean, that's why I think if you wrote an essay for Atlantic Monthly or something and they could accept it and people read it, they'd wake up, you know, to what's going on. But you're, the intellect, who knows about this? Andrew Yang knows about it. Yeah, does he? he? Yeah, yeah, he does, yeah. He talked about it openly during the campaign. Oh, okay. But, but it's, I mean, I think it will eventually make the Western news, but <sighs> solipsistic, <laughs> messianic narcissism is kind of the American worldview. <laughs> I love the movie Armageddon. It came out in what, 1996. American nukes and oil saves humanity. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a, there's a big meteor that's going to hit the world and annihilate it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, there- and so you send up oil men to nuke it. That's our <laughs> worldview. And right-wingers and left-wingers love that movie. It's so cool, you know, like... <laughs> And so I don't, yeah, it'll make the Western news, but it will not penetrate the Western mind because yeah. Western mind is kind of a one way valve <laughs> goes out, yeah. not in. Yeah. We don't learn. Yeah. Um, think of, I mean, think of what happens whenever anybody even remotely challenges the, what the Western way of, you know, you can't do that. The, what the Western way of existing on this planet. Yeah, you can't do that. Russia won't buy it. China won't buy it. Right? I mean, Russia is sort of Ru- is in the same boat in a way as China, isn't it? Yeah, and, same- and ancient. They're a thousand years old. Yeah, they don't. They don't. They they look at what American when when we talk about human rights and freedom and all this nonsense. Nonsense. Look at your look at your acts. Look at what you do. Look yeah. at what you've done to the Middle East trying to destabilize everything. We don't care. We don't give a fuck about you any more than the British Empire. Yeah. We'll deal with you. We won't let you threaten our core interests and yeah. be gone. Psh, 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 yeah. Go. Yeah. We don't you, you're lying to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Human rights? What about free electricity? Yeah. What about alleviating poverty? <laughs> we the American the American worldview looks at the state of things in the 1990s and says, this is good. This yeah. is as it should be. Yeah. All the money flows through Wall Street. Yeah. And they, <laughs> and they control the politics. Yeah, of course they do. Yeah. Think of who you can't challenge. Yeah. I don't need a Jeff Bezos. I don't need to know aristocrats rule me by having, like, let's say Jeff Bezos is in an armed motorcade and there's a traffic jam, and then his uh, private mercenaries open fire to clear the way and just, you know, use a snowplow to get these fucking peasants out of my way. I don't need to see that to know I'm ruled by petty aristocrats. I need to see resistance. I need to see public health care, not an option. I need to see not dealing with China. Don't, Don't you can't challenge big oil. You can't. Yeah. Nationalize them. Nationalize Exxon. Yeah. Unmake them. Yeah. Get rid of Exxon. It is now a public, controlled by the citizenry. You're too important. Oh, that's not an option. So yeah. who rules me? Yeah. Yeah. And at whose expense too? If you look at the Native Americans and the blacks and the right and the minorities and and uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we we lie to ourselves. It's like as you're saying, it's, it's a just, lie. It's a myth. It's a myth. Yeah. And now, on the outside of this myth, there's an ancient empire with three thousand years of history that now has an energy source that is not polluting, a million times more energy dense than fossil fuels, like uh, uh, FDR, our greatest president. Four times elected, right? A socialist. Uh, He had his advisors find out why we won, the Allies won World War II, because we shouldn't have. Germany had a fantastically better army than we did. 
and they came and they they looked at it and they said it's because we had more access to oil than they did than germany did yeah and i i know i've brought this up before but like if you want to know what america is going to kind of look like on a massive scale look at what happened to germany in its last year they had cars running on wood (laughs) they were converting coal into oil yeah and there's a real reason why the massive lunge into stalingrad and all that was really about the oil fields of azerbaijan because that that that's where soviet oil was at the time and they needed the oil fields of romania and the germans themselves yeah we're saying when when the Allies bombed the oil refineries and oil fields of Romania, that's what cut our throat. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. France. Yeah. It wasn't D-Day. You know, who cares about Normandy? What resources? Meanwhile, Japan was losing its oil mm-hmm. in, in the southeast Asia. Absolutely. Southern, yeah. That's why they lost. Yeah. If they had gotten it and been able to secure it, we wouldn't have been able to win. Yeah. Yeah. Not in the Soviets. So now, I mean, it's just like, this is, it's just staggering. It's absolutely staggering. Yeah. You're going to watch the Western world continue to just flounder like this. Wind and solar can't compete. I wonder if it'd be fair to say too, and China doesn't have this delusion that it's got the answer for the whole world. What no. it wants to do is deal with China. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's always looked at the middle kingdom. We look in, yes. whereas the Western is all this idea of progress. We're at the top, and we spread all this bullshit, really. Yeah. And whereas China was, we're going we're gonna to work yes. perfectly comfortable with dealing with China. Yes. And securing what we need in our core interests the, without saying that they all have to be like us. Yes. Yeah. I think that's so crucial to yeah. understanding it. Chinese people— respect and like other cultures and civilizations but they don't want to make you chinese no and they they'll ha- adapt what they can yeah of course yeah without changing whatever that is the That's... core or essence of the sovereignty of chinese civilization yeah yeah china has never had overseas colonies and they've never had missionaries yeah <laughs> and they've never believed in miracles I don't. I would say no. I mean, they no, gave that, like obviously that. the emperor got his power from, you know, yeah. all you know, the, the, and all that heavenly stuff. But I mean, that was not, in a sense, a justification for, for the, this is the way history ought to be. Yeah, the way the West has said yeah. this. Yeah, I would. I would agree with that. But, yeah. So I mean, because like you know, you read Romance of the Three Kingdoms, it's full of miracles. Yeah, but. It, 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 it's it's I, I see that in the same way that they uh secularize their heaven tian yeah. you know there's there's still like servants and stable boys yeah in heaven yeah. You, like you still have to have a doorman yeah. in heaven the heavenly doorman <laughs> <laughs> so you know like this is the heavenly kingdom <laughs> this it's this world you know and 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 in the great learning and whatnot it's it's all about like The Tao is there, but you learn about it from this world. Yeah. You, Wu, you know, Wu, not Wu Wei, uh, Ga Wu, the nature of things, getting next to the nature of things. Things, right. Li, the natural patterns, you observe them and, and learn about the, the substrate. Where is that coming yeah. from? Yeah, yeah. Nature is, yeah. as opposed to nature intends me to be the... Yeah. At the head of, at the, I mean, the Western view of we're at the center of things. Yeah. 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 And, the, and you know, like you can, you can read the Bible all day long. It won't help you in your practical day to day living. Uh, and strangely enough, even with that, the supernatural, it's not supernatural. We almost don't have a word for it. But, you know, there's, there's kind of two ways to read into Taoism of like, are you actually learning about the actual nature of things or are you looking at the text? Because there's probably plenty of Taoist priests and practitioners who are, you know, well, do a ceremony and well, they, oh, whatever. Of course, they have they, their, they have their charlatans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you actually look at it of like, what is Ga Wu? What yeah. what is learning things? You know, like yeah. how do you get sincerity of thinking and rectify your mind and your heart? And from that, all of, you know, <laughs> all of the world. Uh, when you act, you know, you look at what does that mean? What is the nature of nature? Then it then it is not miraculous 
except in the sense that everything is a miracle. Yeah. I don't understand the universe, but well, I do have scientific training and well, I'm and feebly also, groping in the dark. Yeah. And I think it also recognizes you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> and it's final. Yeah. Yeah. But but you're also part of a infinity yeah. that isn't final. Like, the, the you know, like yourself, yes. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Every breath of air you took still exists. Yeah. No, I I agree, but this sense of self, this ego, yeah, is I mean, there's no ego probably in Taoism anyway. There's more of so, yeah. and not well, I don't know how to say it, but and I don't know if about it, but it's I would call it more a sense of self being temporary, yeah, rather than an ego being something that's some yeah. sort of a thing that's going to be permanent somehow. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah, isn't it interesting how the most hidden things are visible and how the most visible things are hidden? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. But to, I mean, this, the, it's so, you know, like there's been plenty of false narratives imposed upon the world. And the world looks at them and goes along its way. Yeah. And doesn't care at all. Yeah. Um, so, but when you're, you, when you're bound by them, when you're inside of it, it feels infinite. Like, yeah. what do you, what do you mean it western civilization isn't real yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean america isn't real yeah. like, look at the boundaries it has no geographic yeah there's no correlation with any geography yeah 50 states why not 47 yeah uh well 50 is a nice round number uh, so, so you know like uh, learning learning like how geography affects politics or like why you know why england why britannia went from being a tiny isolated expensive province to being the core of an empire you know yeah america's got got some real contradictions and uh it, it won't survive them it yeah. can't yeah especially fossil fuels it's just too damn expensive yeah and so yeah go kicking and screaming into the night it doesn't matter you're yeah. still gonna be <laughs> you're going into the night <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah wood that you had i mean ironically i mean some interesting dates uh so the molten salt reactor program in Oak Ridge, tennessee the second one ever built uh that ran for five years started in 1964 and was shut down by Nixon in 1969. Uh, 1970 was the year my mother graduated from high school. Uh, you can see the you can see pictures of that of that reactor. Um, 1971 is the year that America took itself off the gold standard and put itself the dollar on the Saudi Arabian oil, the petrodollar. Yeah. The year I was born, 1983, is the year that china first started cornering the chinese government imp began the process the decision they made the decision to corner the rare earth element market mm -hmm. the year i was born 38 years ago yeah <laughs> you know i was a senior in high school in the year 2001 yeah. i remember the september 11th attacks when we decided this last ditch effort to lunge into the middle east using these you know, terrorist attacks as a casus belli, you yeah. know, as a yeah. carte blanche to do whatever we wanted yeah. occasionally. And now we're getting chased out of Afghanistan. Yeah. And the Chinese accepted envoys from the Taliban in the city of Tian Tianjin yeah. on the road to Beijing yeah. last month. Damn. Came and went. The British Empire will never come back. We know this. Yeah. What, are they going to take over India again? Yeah. They're going to take over Kenya? <laughs> yeah. Same story. Yeah. The Mau Mau in Kenya. They showed you. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And like in Afghanistan is, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, Taliban's just spreading like crazy. It's their country. Yeah. You think China's going to send troops into Afghanistan to fight the Taliban? No. no way. Why would it's not worth a single drop of Afghani bl I mean, Chinese blood? Blood. Yeah. 
not worth a single yuan. Yeah. We'll negotiate with you and you can settle your internal affairs. We have nothing to do with it. Yeah. Whereas the Chinese would would say you keep your you Westerners keep your hands off Tibet and Taiwan. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Stop I mean, it. Yeah. And you're not even serious about Taiwan. Yeah. Are you going to give Taiwan a nuclear weapon? Yeah. That's the most we could do. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. It'd be a catastrophe. Yeah. We should not do it. You know, but it's how do, how do you deal with grown adults who are acting like teenagers yeah. after a while? Yeah. You know, you just you can't. You can't. Oh. You can't talk to or negotiate. So I mean, like this reactor probably you know they have china has enough wealth that they could probably say to people with nuclear waste we'll buy it from you you should just give it to us because it's costing you more to fucking store it and look at it we'll take it okay we'll buy it just so you shut up so it doesn't feel like theft and then they'll scrub it up clean it up put it in their molten salt reactor run their civilization carbon free for, or for maybe another 3000 years <laughs> that's what they're looking at yeah we've been here for 3000 years yeah sure what a terrible burden because i and th- and this is the thing they're not magic it's not supernatural and when they do mess up in about 150 years it will be so bad for the rest of humanity yeah. another civil war yeah. in the heartland of china that civil war will play itself out over the whole damn planet. Yeah. It'll be terrible. Yeah. And it probably probably something like that will happen because it's not a utopia. They're just human beings they're like he- you and me. That's right. And it's happened before. <laughs> it's happened before. Yeah. yeah. You know, but like the you know, like I the you say, you know, you say like, why isn't this news in the West? Because it can't be. Yeah. It can't. Yeah. We can't accept that. Yeah. We can't. You know, th- think of the people who deny that the Earth is old, <laughs> or deny COVID is a real problem. It's <laughs> or not, deny not evolution. A Chinese hoax. Yeah, yeah. Or climate change and yeah. I mean, evolution. I mean, of course, that's one that really gets my goat because. Right. I mean, it's just how can, how can anybody take that literal view of the Bible? Well, because they have a closed mind and they're... Yeah. And, Messianic, uh, solipsistic narcissism. A, it, it is. My soul is it's, so important. It, and it's eternal. That God himself died for it. Yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck. You, you know, just accept it on its face value. Yeah. You? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't see anything special about you in any way, shape, or yeah. form. Yeah. I can barely tell you apart from another human being yeah. it can, in, in your demographic. Yeah. No, no, you know. So. so when do you anticipate getting more news about developments? And when the tests come out. When the tests. They're firing Which, it up uh, next month, and they're going to start running tests in September, if I recall. So okay. it'll, those tests will probably start showing up in the scientific literature. Yeah. So other people within think. a couple of years. Yeah. No, it'll be, it, I mean, reactors like this, you know, like the, I mean, people are going to flock to the door because there is a huge, I mean, it's bit, I mean, it's, it's not worldwide, but people all over the world are very interested in the molten salt reactor. And so they're going to, I mean, think of the prestige of this reactor. Yeah. People are going to, there is a line at the door of saying, hey, can we run this test? Can we run another test? Let's build another reactor yeah. so, so we can do twice the number of tests or three times, you know? Uh, we want to look at neutronics. We want to look at corrosion. We want to see what happens to moderators, neutron moderators. We want to see, look at the chemistry. You can mine, you can take that reactor and continuously mine extremely valuable, uh, radioactive isotopes for medicine as you go to treat cancers like leukemia, dispersed cancers, things like that. Uh, the demand will never stop, yeah. right? Even from other places. And so the, the government would say, 
yeah, you pay us $5 million and we'll run this test for you. You have yeah. this two weeks. You have two weeks in April yeah. to run your test. You come to us with your proposal and we will work with you. So yeah. now they're they're working with that scientific mind. Yeah. Uh, and then you start, look, and then once you have enough know-how built up, you start building them on a commercial scale. Yeah. The, you know, the estimate is that like South Korea, China, and Japan corner something like 70% of the world's shipbuilding capacity. It's very expensive to build ships. It has to be government subsidized. Yeah. You can't do that in the West anymore. Yeah. So our Navy is a pretend Navy. <laughs> if we lose those, <laughs> if we lose those ships, we can't build another one. Yeah. Car it's a, it's a cargo cult Navy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but you start building these reactors in shipyards, literally. You say, okay, we need, you know, like all your welding and all your metallurgy and all that. You re now you won't build ships. You'll build nuclear reactors and you can maybe build one a day. Imagine shutting down one coal-fired or natural gas plant a day. Yeah. Literally substituting it out. Yeah. Here's your heat source. It emits a poison called carbon dioxide that kills your planet. Yeah. We're going to pull that out, that component, and we're going to plug it in with a molten salt reactor core. Yeah. Keep your same steam engine. Yeah. Keep your same... It's stir turbines. Sorry. Yeah. Turbines. Yeah. It's staggering. It is staggering. I've done, That's enough. That's, that's good. That's enough? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's enough. You don't want to talk... No, oh, 41 minutes. Oh. We've only burned through 3 million barrels of oil. <laughs> uh, no? No, I can keep going for a while. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do I'm, get I do get tired. I've never been to China. Yeah, you know, like I I look at videos of the countryside and whatnot and the efficiency of their agriculture. And yeah, I read the literature, but I want to get more on that. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you've read about it. Yeah, uh, you probably understand it more at that level. But I mean, I mean, when you see how altered that landscape is and how yeah. long it's been altered, yeah, it blows your mind. Yeah, it really does. And, you know, even, for example, in Chengdu, with that one ring road, mm. I mean, they, they you, every vehicle that came into that city had to be washed in 1993 and 94. Oh. Can you imagine doing that? You can't do that no. now. But that's because it was all dirt roads out. It was dirt. It was, oh, there weren't okay. that many vehicles. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. But now all those dirty areas out there are high-tech centers and yeah. high-rise buildings. And, I mean, I don't know how much ag good agriculture land. I mean, it's been good. I mean, around Chung it's Chengdu yeah, Plain yeah. is as rich as it comes. Oh, God. How much, how much yeah. of that agricultural land has been lost yeah. as a consequence of the— Enormous. It's a huge amount. Yeah, yeah. And yet what you do have is modern technology with genetic— you know, altered rice and stuff like yeah. that that have compensated to some degree, but it can't go on forever. No, but I mean, you you if you have free electricity like hydroponics and yeah. growing things, yeah, that helps. Seven, yeah, yeah, it does. Greenhouses, yeah, things like that, yeah. And it's I mean the the scale of the, like the what environmentalism in China, you know? Oh, there it's there. I yeah. mean, there's even now like a local. In Chengdu, a local Audubon society that has pictures. I mean, just at that level. Sure. Bird lovers. Yeah. But no, I mean, Xiao Wei, he had this organic farmer. They actually part of the school. I don't yeah. think it is anymore, but this guy, that's what he wanted to get into was mm -hmm. organic farming. Yeah. And so they had four or five acres there that they were working and the students would come and do it. And and uh, there were people in this class on Western China that I, that Greg Youths had, had organized what I led that semester where there were environmentalists came in. This is what we're trying to do with sewage and, yeah. you know, stuff like that. It's there. It has to be. But as one of the, I, know, I forget which one of the premiers it was at the time, might've been Hu Jintao or even, Jiang says, Jiang. you know, says with carbon dioxide, it's not like sulfur rain. In China, people get pissed off when you get acid rain and all yeah. of a sudden things like that. But with carbon dioxide, it's hard to get the awareness up. But yeah. now with this flooding in China and, yeah. and the more extreme weather events, I mean, they're not ignoring it. No. And certainly the people there. And they're, you know, that sort of thing. But there is environmentalism. Yeah. Uh, but you, it is here too. But yeah. you, you put the Republicans in power and what happens? I mean, you know, they, they do it as a symbolic 
Yeah. There's, they are symbolically anti-environmental. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as if you had a spare one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, any public lands, it's got, all has to be turned into profit yeah, somehow, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, I mean, that's why, I mean, especially under Trump, these people he had in, in, yeah. in EPA and energy. and But it was even symbolic, like, the, ask him deep down, like, what if it's not cost benefit? What if there's no profit to be made from a public land privatization? Yeah. They would still go after it. Sure. Because yeah. it's it's a symbolic it's, it bears is. ears or whatever it is like shrink, shrinking. You can't the size have the, the you can't have the government. No, yeah, no, they, yeah no. even though they are the government. Yeah, it's an interesting. This ties into like the aristocracy versus imperium kind of dichotomy I've m mentioned. Uh, like this, aristocrats can only look after their own self interest. Yeah. Whereas an imperium, an empire looks after the common interests of the aristocrat and the common people and the civilization itself. Yeah. You know, and so you give, if you give, if the actual ruling class is aristocrats, they will carve up their own society like a cake. Yeah. They don't care and they cannot, they can't care because they're aristocrats. Yeah. That's who they are. Yeah. Fine with me. Yeah. That's your interest, yeah. you know, but you don't get to control the government. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like history is full of regimes, governments that have killed themselves because aristocrats took over. Yeah. They, they, this is not hypothetical. I could bring them up. Carthage. Yeah. yeah. Carthage was an aristocratic trading empire that had the most brilliant military mind. The, the tactical genius uh, and strategic genius of the ancient world, and they couldn't even support him. They actually downsized the size of their navy yeah. during the Second Punic War, yeah. after the Battle of Cannae, because it cost too much. Yeah. Where's Carthage now? Yeah. <sighs> it's, you know, businessmen run America. Yeah. The business of America is business. business. Oh, sorry. What's good for General Motors is good for America. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, you failed. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, and at the and at the heart at the heart of the fact that a central government, an imperial government, can say ecological civilization that is at the heart of of ideology right now of China. That is so important. It 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 pulls the whole needle, the direction, the compass needle in the right direction mm -hmm. ecological civilization we can't even say that word yeah no we I, can't even say civilization yeah well and then you asked about environmentalism in china two more things i could say at the at the more personal level in terms of sanitation mm. it's much cleaner mm. i mean just about if you go into a public toilet now it's clean yeah and it's got running water mm. and there's electricity and they keep it clean uh the air is cleaner mm. i mean it yeah, really yeah. is cleaner and meanwhile, in Chengdu, with all of this development of the city, they've also established very good-sized wetlands. Nice. For where the rivers come down and then it can yeah. flood out to some degree. So you have, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they're pretty good-sized. Whether it's enough, who knows? But I mean, but there is this awareness, and so I can see you can see more birds in Chengdu now, despite the, the development. The, yeah. Than, it, than you saw in 1990, nice. and more different kinds of birds, nice. because these wetlands, within right within the, well, certainly the ones within the, within the second ring road, there's a couple, and then as you go out, they're even bigger, and mm. they have these things along the waterways. Nice. You know, this was all irrigated thousands of years ago, these right. channels that came out. Oh, geez. But they've built these wetlands as part of it, and released, you know, gone out and have you been to that fi the fish mouth oh, yeah. irrigation? Been work? to the fish mouth, sure. Yeah, I've seen I mean that's one of the first places they t t take Westerners in yeah. Chengdu. And still this, functioning yes, after two thousand years. Li Ping, he's <laughs> he's one of my heroes, I and mean, he really is. He yeah. was an engineer, and what you, you know, what you, you know, he was there before China was unified. China? Yeah, he was Chin. He was Chin, and what they did is they kind of consolidated their power there and the resources. And meanwhile, Colossal. as they wanted to conquer the rest of China, they had two rivers like a pincer. They could take armies yeah. down these two rivers and just, I mean, and you can imagine the amount of 
food and rice yeah. and going arrows, down river and, and all the arrows and stuff yeah. that they would have piled up the wood but i mean lee ping it was i mean he really was I mean, he knew his water yeah and engineering you know that fish he didn't mouth. have gunpowder to even break the rocks they used fires right right and Heat and then get, yeah, yeah and crack it but but you know, and it, it you know it's where he did that. It was also he chose the only place you could do it. Yeah, it's where this little bluff comes out, and the river came in. He could mm. cut through that yeah. as a diversion where the river went, and then control it upstream from that. And the fish mouth is still there, and it's still it's such there. A, it's still, well, it's, a, it's really a cool place. Ah, well, and the way and the way it scours the silt out and yeah, like yeah, a right. High water no, it's still there. Water. It blows my mind. But that's where they wanted to build a dam upstream from that on the oh. Minchin, and that's oh. where. People stopped it. I, as far as I know, it was stopped the last, and this is 10 or 15 years ago. Right. I, I haven't heard of any, you know. Damn, I, I don't think they I did. Think they but at that time, the first time I went up there, and the first couple times in the early 90s, what you're surprised by is these logs coming down the river. Well, oh. they go up and they were cutting the forest, and how do you oh. get them down to market? Yeah. And, of course, what does it do with the logs? They yeah. get banged up. and I mean, it's just, uh, you know, they, they're not doing that now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because that's right. That's right. The Panda Reserve is right up upstream from that. It's, I mean, it's oh. not that far. Ching Fong, the 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 a panda. Did you? Is that what yeah, the saying? panda. Oh, okay. I thought you were referring Wulong. to the elephant ones. Wulong. Yeah. No, Wulong. Wulong. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I mean, you know, that's all beautiful country back up there. But now, I don't know about up that river valley. When I first tried to go there, I, you know, I was going to develop this natural history course of China, and so I went in 1992 and. Mm. Said, well, can we can we drive up and go up to this Wulong? Well, <laughs> we're driving up there. We had to turn around, and here's this dirt road just going up this river. And the guy, I said, well, can't we go? And some other guy says, you can't go. There's no road anymore. It's down <laughs> in the river. Oh, <laughs> so I couldn't. We we yeah. couldn't even go up there. But yeah. I suspect now. Well, since then, I've been up there. I've taken what? I guess I've been up there with a couple classes. But but uh, that was more of a road. But then one of the next valleys over. Now has a major freeway going right up mm. into those mountains up on the Tibet Plateau, and Damn. there are others like that. So Damn. that's changing. It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, if you haven't, this will allow us to become the molten salt reactor. Will allow us to withdraw from our ecological footprint. Yeah. Right. You, if you chase after very energy diffuse sources like wind and solar. You have to put a huge amount of footprint down. Yeah. This means that you can have a million times smaller ecological footprint than even fossil fuel. Yeah. This it's not understood that if you're going to go with wind and solar, you have to put in land-mounted solar like the size of the entire Northeast United States, like more than Maryland, New York. Yeah. You know. Uh, and and I've, I sent you that video, Mark yeah. Jacobs, yeah. 100% renewable plan. This will allow you to. Sh See, not even – if you go to wind and solar, not that it'll work, not that we're even trying, yeah. it will have a bigger ecological footprint than even fossil fuels yeah. because a lump of coal is solar energy yeah. that nature concentrated for you for free. Yeah. Well, molten salt reactor <laughs> means you can be a million times smaller than even fossil fuel. Yeah. So the, the amount of nature reserves can grow – a lot, yeah. not exponentially, because there's not an infinite amount of land in the world or natural natural yeah. areas. But like, think think of uh, think of it this way: not only will you be able to take out dams, which are lethal for natural rivers, it's yeah. the worst thing you could do to them, just about. <laughs> yeah. um, it will allow you to withdraw from farmland yeah. because now you have free electricity. You can grow all your veggies in, you know, like a three story greenhouse type of thing, your lettuce, your small stuff. Well, yeah. if you can do that continuously, 24 seven, not even day and night, yeah. you can rewild parts of the world. Yeah. You don't need the wind to be blowing the sun to be up, the clear skies. You don't need to store and energy. You don't need this huge amount of space as you're saying. Yeah. You don't need to store energy and batteries at all because it's already stored in the nucleus of a uranium or thorium or plutonium atom. You know, would be which got there from like the collision of a neutron star. Yeah. So it makes me wonder now when you, you make these equivalents, you can take this and the, here's this pound of this can do that. That how you know when you see all those uh, wind powered things over mm. there by Vantage. I mean, there's a lot. Of oh that. yeah. That probably produces what the equivalent of less than. In a small dam, 
Yeah. When it's working full steam. Yeah. You know, I mean, full. the capacity factor. Yeah. Because the wind doesn't always. No. Blow. So, but I mean, at full capacity, it's probably like the equivalent of that. They're like 150 megawatts at best, or like 50 megawatts at best. Yeah. 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 So, well, you got me more optimistic anyway. It is. You're, you lived long enough to see it, mugs. Yeah. We're having this conversation. It's extra. Even this stupid vanity piddling podcast at the beginning of it i didn't know yeah. that they were building it and yeah. now they've announced it this is hope you were you were very hopeful at the time yeah I mean, I was. you knew you figured I you knew try was it. working on it yeah but yeah. i didn't you know yeah. i didn't know what, what, what the progress be, was. would it be in my lifetime <laughs> probably yeah. not <laughs> yeah i didn't think so yeah. and it, it, you know it's it's extraordinary it's, well that's it, good yeah that's so i'll i'll say like there's enough background uranium and thorium are a part of the earth yeah right uh so th rocks like granite have trace amounts of uranium and thorium in them or you know schist or nice or you know yeah even sedimentary rocks there's enough in there that if you use it efficiently like in a molten salt reactor there's they've actually said it's burning the rocks so there's enough energy in that background radiation if you use it in a breeder reactor that as long as the earth has rocks <laughs> you'll have enough energy to run a civilization yeah so until we run out of rocks when the sun explodes <laughs> yeah we'll be fine yeah damn yeah i mean that is it is reason for optimism again my question is will it be it is too late. We've already the harm. It's too late to undo the harm we've already done. Right. That's the point. But I mean, before even more more irreparable harm. Yeah, that's the problem. All harm in the long run is irreparable. Yeah, you just move on. Yeah, you move forward. Yeah, start. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, all right. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah. No good.